Pledge. There we go. We're going to say a pledge. We want to ask the Stratford Robotics team to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Get to the first three words. That's all we need. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Don't move. <laughs> Tonight, we want to recognize the SpartaBots, the robotics team at Stratford's Academy of Science and Engineering, for coming out on top at the Smoky Mountain Regional Competition. They outperformed nearly 50 teams from Kansas, Illinois, Arkansas, Pennsylvania, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, West Virginia, and Tennessee. Next, the group will be moving on to the first Robotics World Championship in St. Louis later this month. Congratulations to the students as well as to Dr. Jennifer Berry, the Academy Principal for Science and Engineering at Stratford. I will now ask Stratford's principal, Dr. Mike Steele, to tell you more about this group of very talented students. Dr. Steele. Mr. Jensen, thank you, distinguished board. Thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, I want to recognize this is part of our robotics team. Some of the students could make it playing sports and whatnot. I want to quickly uh, recognize Dr. Berry for her outstanding leadership in the ACE Academy and acknowledge some of our business partners who are making the world uh, championship a possibility. Possibility, Barge Wagner, Sumner and Cannon, Nissan, Universal Robotics, Wright Industries, and of course our Stratford PTSO. Uh, four years ago, this team, this ragtag team, was rookie team of the year in Knoxville, and they've been fighting hard ever since. Uh, and this year, they overcame a lot of adversity in the competition to take the regional championship, and now they're going to world. They had the world championship needed a commitment within 48 hours, and every one of these uh, team members and their families who are here tonight committed to being in the world so that's a, a lot of dedication and at this time I'd like to introduce their captain his John, this is Jonathan and Jonathan's gonna tell you a little bit about the competition okay I'm Jonathan Smith I'm a senior at Stratford High School and uh, I'm going to go on to study mechanical engineering at either UTK or Vol State and uh, before I say anything else, I'd like to thank our principal and assistant principal, Dr. Steele and Dr. Berry, for all the support they've given us, or given us. And also, I'd like my teammates to introduce themselves. Awesome. Good plate. So, uh, okay, hello, my name is Mike Mulga, and um, I'm going to Belmont University, and as of a major, I'm undecided. Honorable scholarship. Wow. Excellent. My name is Bryce Odom, and I'm going to move on to go to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and I'm going to try to study mechanical engineering. Yes. Scholarship. Scholarship. Oh, scholarship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We just said you don't want to. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Chase Hudson, and I'm planning on going to the University of Tennessee at Knoxville and studying fisheries and wildlife management. Oh. And full scholarship. All righty now. I didn't my name is Casey Scott. I'm going to Austin Peay State University for nursing. Hello, my name is Kendall Johnson. I plan to go to SCAD University and major in graphic design. My name is Jacob Yock. I hope to either go to UTK or MTSU to study mechanical engineering. That's great. <laughs> Okay, so I would like to read a, a comment that another team left about us after the regionals. And this was one of the teams that was on our alliance that we won the regionals with. They said, Team 4740, you guys were great partners and played a great defensive role for our alliance. This whole event was essentially a war of attrition, and you guys were the perfect personification of that. As well as a great spirit of gracious professionalism, we were just one of several teams that offered up assistance in getting your bot assembled and through inspection on Thursday. And then we were also helping with software, comm issues, bumper brackets, etc., all the way through eliminations on Saturday. No matter what the challenge, you guys persevered through it all and played some great defense. Your drivers were great to work with. You played your role as perfectly as you could. Awesome job, guys. Best of luck, and we hope you're able to enjoy your experience in St. Louis. You've earned it. That's great. We'd like to get a picture with all of you. I'll ask uh, Ms. Kim, the board member, and Dr. Gentry, the board chair, to, to join us. We have a certificate for you. Put your man here, hold it up. He's tall. Let's get right here, guys. 
My name is Michael Bezum. I plan on going to UTK next year. Um, next year, yep. this year, and I plan on majoring in engineering. Yep, another picture. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, Miss Shepherd, Governance Issues Consent Agenda. <laughs> The consent agenda reads as follows. 1A, recommend a board of contract for district-wide land surveying services at various schools, Cherry Land Surveying. B, recommend a board of contract for district-wide land surveying survey services at various schools, HFR Design. C, recommend a board of contract for district-wide land surveying services at various schools, Little John and S&ME Company. D, recommend a board of contract for construction management services, Norman Binkley Elementary School Additions, Orion Bill Building Corporation. E, recommend approval of supplement number one for Glencliffe Elementary School additions, bootstrap architecture and construction. F, recommend approval of change order number one for Bordeaux Early Learning Center office edition, Carrie G. Campbell construction. And G, recommend approval of request number 16 for asbestos abatement to Rosebank Elementary School renovations, Levi Industrial Contractors. Madam Chair, I recommend that we approve the consent agenda as read. Okay. <laughs> Moved and properly second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor of approving the agenda as read? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? All right. Reports. I'll ask Fred Carr to come to the podium. And Fred, I don't know if you want to bring some members of your, your team. Uh, tonight we're going to provide the board with the first or initial uh, update regarding the infinite campus student information system that the district is transitioning to for the coming school year. And we want to bring you this, as I said, an initial introduction and update. And then we're going to bring more uh, detail back to you at the May 24th board meeting. So I'll turn it over to Fred just as soon as my screen warms up. There we go. Thank you, Director Henson. Um, we are bringing up a new piece of software called Infinite Campus. It is going to be replacing our current PowerSchool application and our grade speed application and a few other pieces of software at the same time. This is the main database software that we use to track all of our students, demographic, grades, schedules, transcripts. Um, in short, everything that goes on in a school, 
this is the um, software that we'll be using. We have used PowerSchool for about 11 years. It is a Pearson product that was originally an Apple product. And um, about 18 months ago, Pearson dropped support of the product. And we used that opportunity to put out a major RFP to look for new software that would be uh, modern, that would be easier for teachers to use, that would be easier for administrators to use, and that would allow us to communicate more efficiently with parents and students. So we actually had a, uh, a consultant come in that helped us write the RFP. They took requirements from uh, parents, teachers, principals and IT folks and we generated a, an RFP. The process was about six months to choose Infinite Campus and we made this decision knowing that it's going to be a 10-year decision. Switching software is a major issue and uh, we knew we'd have this for a while so we had to make we had to make the correct decision. Um, we've been working on transitioning from Power School to Infinite Campus for about nine months with all the behind the scenes work. We have to prepare the databases to transfer, all of the scheduling, and um, the timing of it, it's either really good or really not good. We're changing over this summer, which is of course the major time when students are moving from school to school and we're getting schedules ready and getting ready to open school, but it was it was the timing that had to be because um, it will be, actually we'll have a blackout period while we're transitioning from one system to the other and we're currently doing a lot of training on this. The advantages of Infinite Campus are that it is a uh, a very modern system on a very modern relational database. It will run much faster than PowerSchool. It is easier to use, although there will be a learning curve for all of us um, to learn how to use it. An advantage from the teachers area is Infinite Campus is one whole package. The grading, the reporting to parents, the communication portal to parents, it's all in one package. Right now, teachers have to go to grade speed, which is a different program, to record their grades and print report cards. In Infinite Campus, everything's all in the same package. So again, there'll be a learning curve, but overall it will be um, much simpler to use. It's a very integrated package. So things that we're having to do right now in separate pieces of software, um, we won't have to do. The, uh, there, are, uh, there is an app available for parents that will run on Android or iPhone so that uh, parents can have easy access to, or students also, can have easy access to their information and their records. Um, Advantage is you don't have to have internet access. You can uh, get it on an app on your phone. Teachers can actually access it on, uh, on an iPad or a computer, whether they're on campus or off campus. That's where the name Infinite Campus comes from. So it's, uh, it's a very exciting project. It is a major project. It will involve um, everyone that works in a school that works with students in any way will be affected by the change from Power School to Infinite Campus. So we've been working in the background for months, getting this uh, ready to roll out. Um, last month, I hired Carmen Brown as a principal on special assignment to lead the push final implementation of Infinite Campus. We needed someone to lead the project who knew about organization and project management, but also who knew about how schools operate and what we need in schools 
and someone that can communicate with schools and principals and teachers as we roll out this project this summer. So I'm going to let Carmen run through uh, a couple of slides, six, six, or six or seven, Dr. Gentry. We've limited it. Um, to does that include the title slide? The, that, that does include the title okay. slide, yes. Um, so uh, this will give you a little bit more detail and kind of a look and feel. We will be coming back to you with updates. I'm sure you will be hearing from people as they go through the training um, and learn about it. We've started out with our uh, Infinite Campus 101 course right now, which people have available. And we're, as uh, Carmen will tell you in a minute, we're doing multiple methods of delivering the staff development to get people ready for this. This is not just you have to go to Martin Center and sit in a computer lab and learn it. We are delivering the staff development in multiple ways. So, Mr. Brown, thank you. Good evening. Um, thank you for allowing us a few minutes to share with you what's going on with Infinite Campus. Um, we'll share some, I lost my, sorry, technical difficulties already. Okay, just want to give you a quick overview of the, the dates and major milestones that are upcoming so you'll have an idea of those and we can forward these to you after we're finished tonight. Obviously in April and August this is the big time of the year that we're trying to train everyone before some of our 10-11 month employees leave for the summer. Um, obviously training will go throughout up until August 3rd. This is a huge undertaking for seven or eight thousand employees that we're trying to get somewhat prepared for what's coming down the road. Um, June 6th at the end of that day a big piece of Infinite Campus and Power School will go down so the transition can begin. The, those uh, in each building who are in charge of the master schedule will be able to continue to work on the master schedule until June 24th. So that basic window from the 6th for parts of the transition will begin and then everything else will begin on the 24th to be ready for the go live on July the 11th. So that's the big day that we're shooting for at this point between July 11th and August um, 3rd, start of school. Um, everyone will be able to go in and clean up their master schedules or add new students. I know last summer in a two week window they had 10,000 new enrollees um, in July. So that will be our time for the new master schedule um, additions, whether that's a specific group of classes or teacher needs or whatever the case may be will take place during that time. And then once we get um, school started, a whole new calendar will be developed that will start bringing on the next round of upgrades and additions that we need to get in place for the semester and school year of 2016-2017. This uh, tool mapping is, as you can see, what we had in Power School, um, was just Power School and Grade Speed, and now we've gone to a far more comprehensive outlook of what Infinite Campus will do for us that was not available before. Um, the, the things that we're already learning about Infinite Campus with training is even though we're teaching all of our trainers and Brad Parnell and his team to get ready for the summer, there's so much more available online that, that teachers are already able to um, check in and watch videos and start manipulating and getting used to what they're going to use in the fall. Parent Portal uh, will be the place for whomever the parents and guardians, grandparents, aunt and uncles, whoever, that will be where district messages can be pushed and eventually as it gets set up will be for teacher um, emails in mass or to specific families and students. And this will be another format for them to use besides just the district email. So hopefully that will take a lot off of what they've normally done in the past with teacher emails and it'll all be done through parent portal. They'll have their own um, login and passwords, and there'll also be a student portal that they'll be able to set up once we get started in August and get all the schedules and everything cleaned up and teachers set. So that is a huge feature where they'll be able to see their grades, their missing assignments, their upcoming assignments, homework, whatever, whatever the um, is tied to the Infinite Campus Instruction book. It's no longer obviously going to be called Grade Speed. So Campus Instruction will be the new title for grading and assignments and everything else. So that will be a new piece that will be added as we go. Um, as Fred mentioned earlier, the Campus 101 training has already started for teachers. That came out in early um, April, end of March, right around spring break as we came back from there. 
to date, we have been doing uh, admin training, which is for all principals and assistant principals, and master schedule training, and some front office training for the secretaries, bookkeepers, and support staff. Um, the public portal page for anyone that just comes and visit is, visits mnps.org. Just give a basic overview of Infinite Campus, um, some of the bells and whistles that can be there for parents who are already trying to figure out what's coming down, in, down the road in August. So that will be a part of their um, view this summer. And then training, training, training. Uh, as, as you know, that is the huge piece of what we've got. There's um, lots of different pieces of the puzzle that we're all getting trained on, depending on your role as a certificated person or, or a support person that will be specific to the training you receive throughout the summer and fall. And it's the different methods of training that we're using so far, face-to-face, -face, online, and then um, each school will have two to four teacher coaches trained that will be the experts in their building when we start this fall when they come back for professional development days. Uh, typ typical calendar look for the summer, uh, for April and May right now, we've got administrator training, scheduling, front office, the teacher coach training has started, and then central office people will be trained as well. And that is a quick overview of Infinite Campus. If I could introduce uh, Al Gaines, I, I think many of you on the board have met Al. He is the magician behind the scenes that has been uh, leading all of the technical aspects of the Infinite Campus project and who has been figuring out how to make it work. Uh, he is our, our immediate contact with the technical side of the Infinite Campus team. Infinite Campus has had um, a project manager on site with us for about the last nine months um, working with our team to get the transition in place. So if there are any questions, one of the three of us will be glad to respond. Okay, Mr. Pinkson and Ms. Shepard. Oh, Ms. Shepard and Ms. Pinkson. Uh, thank you. Uh, this looks really good. So my question is around um, when you did the RFP process, did you look at other users of this particular product and you know what their um, responses or reactions were to this product? We did, and one of the key features in that process was to look at large districts. Um, there are a number of software packages out there that work very well for small school districts but are not scalable. So we looked at a number of cities and there are a number of cities all across the country that use Infinite Campus and it is highly scalable. One example I'll give you is that it's the difference between our old product and our new product is the new product in Infinite Campus uses a relational database versus a flat database in PowerSchool. So in PowerSchool, um, Ms. Frog has two kids in the system, so we have all of their information listed twice. We have their address listed for each student, we have their phone numbers listed, their parents listed. In Infinite Campus, it's a relational database, so if a family has two students in the district, that address is just in one place and the student names are related to that address. So the database is much smaller, therefore it runs much faster um, and we're able to generate different kinds of reports. So the actual engine that runs the software is very different and it's also scalable to our size. Did they give you any points to um, watch out for, for lack of better words, if, you know, that we might, you know, want to be proactive in fixing if we have some issues? What we, what we have looked at is our rollout of Chancery uh, about 11 years ago, and we have also asked them, we asked them as part of the RFP, tell us what you've run into in other districts so that we can plan around that. We know we'll have some challenges, but we want to go ahead and cover the ones that you've had in other places. So that's what Al and his team have been doing in meeting and meeting and meeting um, to make sure we have 
all of the questions answered. We, we dealt with one today, um, and it's, it's really important, but it's one that you don't think about. When we take attendance, do we take attendance by periods or do we take it by minutes? Currently, we take it by periods. But if we look to the future, future options that Infinite Campus has, it has the ability to call a parent if the student is late to class, for example. So that means we want to do attendance by minute instead of by period. So it's those kinds of very detailed questions that we have to answer that we have worked very closely with Dr. Major's department on um, discipline, for example, all the discipline coding, how we do that, how it matches with the state, and then attendance, all of our coding, and how we can get the state reporting accurate. So there's been a lot of work that's gone into this point. Thank you. Mr. Pinkston. So just looking at, uh, at the Infinite Campus website, and it looks like they have an online demo um, that people can sign up to see and, and register. I assume, you know, with something that's going to be deployed at this kind of scale, you know, we're going to be hearing a lot of feedback, uh, good, bad, and different. Um, might make sense at some point to set up a couple of demo um, uh, opportunities for us just so we can understand it and know how to respond when we get the comments. Um, Ab absolutely, we'll be glad to do that. What we've actually done um, in the schools so far is we took a week and ran demo days and um, Al and a team from Infinite Campus went to schools and did demos. It's very similar to the one that's online um, and part of the reason we're addressing you tonight is as people take the training we fully expect them to let you know how they like it or don't like it so that was the exact reason for the heads up tonight and we'll be glad to set up a uh, some demo times for board members to see what the product can do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Moving on to director search uh, update. Uh, you, we all received, I guess somewhere around April 13th, a memo from Jim Huey, who is uh, our recruiter. Um, and included a lot of information uh, around the process and the timeline for the search. Um, there was a section on um, soliciting questions. So I want to thank all of you that did submit questions to, uh, to Jim um, so that we can start to prepare uh, those packets and handouts for us to facilitate our, our interviews. Uh, also included uh, in that memo um, was a section around uh, board protocols. and. Um, I'm, I've asked um, Mr. Huey to join us today um, to uh, kind of a, uh, give us just a, a brief uh, overview of the information if we have anything else he wants to add um, and to talk us, to us about the board protocols. This was a section that sort of stood out to me and our understanding just reading that it's uh, based on industry standards and best practices to help this time around for us to be as successful as possible. You gave it to me quicker than I thought. I told you not to go anywhere. We don't play around here. <laughs> good evening, everybody. It's good to see all of you again and to finally meet one of you uh, face to face. We've only been electronic up till now, so it's great to see all of you. Um, as indicated, I'm just going to give you a very quick report because she gave me a very tight timeline uh, around the fact that you have to be done by 6 o'clock and there's another report before me and you have some other business. But first of all, I want to thank you all for all the effort that you put in. You put in a great deal of time. You've been quick in your responses to me when I had requests, which have been many. You've always been available when I needed, when I was on site. So I really appreciate that. It makes the process much easier for us. And I wanted to give you one quick update about the recruiting side of it. My, just You already have all of this. I left you a phone message not long ago or talked with you in person that gave you uh, an indication of how well it's going. But I just want to reiterate a little bit of that in public. Part of it is that the recruiting effort's going very well for a number of reasons. First one is that there's been a great deal of effort put in by all of you 
by the community, by the Superintendent Search Advisory Committee, and that effort has really paid off in terms of the perception that candidates have. I've told the Nashville story so often and so rapidly, my only regret is that I wish I were 15 years younger. Um, I would be an applicant, but I wouldn't make the finals if your recruiter does as good a job as I hope he will. Um, that was humor, and, but I hope it's true. Uh, the, the other thing I want to indicate is to thank you in advance for the heavy time commitment and the adjustment of your schedules to the degree humanly possible uh, for the upcoming set of interviews. It's critical, as we've talked before, that that set of interviews be done in a very tight time frame, and you're going to be very busy during the May 3rd through uh, May 13th timeline, and you have all those dates, I know. But it is critical for a couple of reasons. First, the candidates are looking at us at the same time we're looking at them. And we're going to be getting a great deal of information to you about each candidate. And in addition to that, you will gain a lot of information during those sets of interviews. But at the same time that's happening, when we're doing those uh, interviews, the candidates are looking at us as well. And I know you know that, but that's the reason why I sent the memo and gave some suggested protocols. Candidates are looking for a match just like we're looking for a match. And in today's market, I hate to say it, but you can read about it in terms of teacher shortage and retirements and all of that, there are far more opportunities for great leaders in education than there are openings. Um, I'm sorry, the other way around. More opportunities than there are candidates. Um, I know I can get through this. Uh, but at any rate, it makes it a tight market. But despite that, the response has been very, very strong. And I hope it will lead to the fact that I can bring to you six highly capable leaders from a wide variety of backgrounds. And if as many come to the finish line as it looks like they will, we'll be able to present you a slate that I think you can feel very good about, any one of whom I believe could be a great leader for Metro Nashville. And obviously I will bring those to you on May 3rd, and I'm really looking forward to that opportunity. And in addition to that, it's the time when it becomes exciting for all of you. You've been through this, so you know that. But when you finally get to see the faces and meet the people and then ask them questions and frankly learn from them and have them learn from you. Uh, it was interesting in talking with a number of the potential candidates that they also gave information to me saying there are some highlights and they were highlighted in the report that indicated some of the great things and strengths about this school district and some had come to visit for that reason. And because they had, they were interested after learning about it in possibly being a candidate. So uh, I thought you ought to know that as well, that while we have many situations where the kids are not achieving at the level you all want, we have some good things going on as well and we need to take pride in those and build on those. <coughs> Then the reason I sent you the memo regarding potential uh, issues around the protocols we should have during the interview process, uh, those come from my experience, both good and bad, in 35 years of working with boards of education during a search process like this. And you all had, in my private conversations with you one-on-one, -on -one, have already indicated a many, many of these that you believe we need to adhere to. And I want to take a minute just just to review a couple of them. And then as always, I'm available to any of you individually or in any way you want to ask any questions you may have or give any comments. And we did, when we sent out the memo, ask for any comments that you might have. We got a couple and we responded to those. But most of you were just saying, I believe in these, I reinforce them, and you can count on me to, to do those. One, and this is the showing of my age, I have to put on my glasses to read it rather than bore you, and you have this in front of you. Um, the first one I want to talk about is that when we evaluate the candidates and you get the information about them and ask them questions, just a reminder that we need to look at the total package, experience, belief structure, record, and not let one issue or one item be either the reason we include someone or the reason we exclude them. 
If there is a particular concern you have, I would strongly urge you to raise that with me and with the candidate when they're here, because that's the best way to find out. The other thing that I want to point out is that, as I said, they're looking at us as well, and they're looking at all the behaviors of all of us, but especially the nine of you. They recognize that their chance for success and their ability to help all kids is directly dependent on the nine of you. And you're the only nine who can make this decision. And I want to take a bird walk there and indicate that one of the other things that the potential candidates that we've called have spoken about is not only that they see a great deal of potential in Metro Nashville and the excitement that's going on in the city, but they were complimentary of you as a collective body for broadening the search and including a great deal of community input. Um, that doesn't always happen. And frankly, the report, and particularly page 12, I can almost recite it to you by now, uh, where you listed the four major domains and what you were looking for and the fact that the candidates had to have uh, demonstrated the competency in at least two of those areas and be conversant in all four. And I'm hopeful the ones we bring to you eventually will be able to demonstrate it in all four. But they were complimentary of you in that, in that you didn't have to do that. You're the only nine who could make the decision, but you said we want to have the community involvement, which really helps the candidate once they arrive. The other one I want to point out on the suggested protocols is the one that speaks to contact with the candidates during the time period that we're going through the interviews. And I worded it this way, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. To ensure fairness and to present, or prevent rather, not present, but to prevent any misperceptions, it's strongly advised that board members have no direct contact with candidates or prospective candidates. You hear a rumor that we might be looking at one outside the formal interview process until the selection process is over. This is critically important because it isn't just actual, it's also perception that if they perceive that an individual board member is reaching out to a particular candidate, it makes it very difficult for the rest of them to see the process as being absolutely fair. And we run the risk of losing a person because of that. And I just wanted to say it because I've seen it happen in districts that um, I've observed, and I just don't want us to be in that position. We want every candidate who comes through here to, to be as excited about Nashville as they are when we talk to them now. And when they leave the process, even the five who don't get it, if it's five that we interview, or six rather, with five who don't get it, they should still be able to sing the praises of Metro Nashville. So that's my quick report, and I can't wait for uh, May 3rd. I think it'll be um, an exciting time for all of us. And if you have any questions at any point or any issues you want to raise, as you already have, and that's greatly appreciated, please call me or let me know. Thank you so Madam much, Madam Chair. Mr. Okay. So. Thank you. We all good? Anything here to give us pause that we want to express any concerns about? I just, want to make, I just want to make a comment. Please do. I'm very excited about this, Jim. She was actually dancing earlier. Yeah. Came the conference room dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I came in dancing, that's right. That's good. Uh, dancing yes. with the stars, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, we have had uh, experiences that have been questionable, and this process feels so right. So thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you to the, the committee, that Education <coughs> Foundation, to the community that's worked on this, and I think we're going to be very successful. Thank, thank you. you. That's your credit in the communities, not mine. So <laughs> thanks. Okay, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. I appreciate it. All right, guess what? It's time for announcements. I'm going to start with you. Good. Ms. Pierce? I, did, uh, I was trying to find the time. Uh, JT Moore is uh, sponsoring uh, the production of Lion King, and it starts the 21st and runs the 23rd. I believe it's at 7 p.m. at JT Moore. That's it. Mr. Pinkson? Yep. Oh. 
Um, just two quick ones. I want to uh, say thank you to the Dallas and Hermitage Rotary Club for honoring our Teachers of the Year in the McGavick Cluster last Wednesday and for inviting me to participate in that joyous occasion. And then um, congratulations to, to the 2016 Yale graduates of Leadership Dallas and Hermitage. Yale is an acronym that stands for Youth Excelling in Learning and Leadership. And we had 24 graduates from this, uh, from this organization last night. We have 10 uh, high school juniors from DCA, 10 from McGavick High School, two from Tennessee School for the Blind, and two homeschoolers. And the, the keynote speaker was a young lady from the Tennessee School for the Blind, and she did a fantastic job with her with her speech. So congrats to all those graduates. Okay. I'm going to get this wrong. I'm going to do my best. The Tri-State Minority uh, suppliers and the D stands for something council had their uh, awards um, impact awards this past week this past Thursday um, and several uh, MNPS students there were other students not from MNPS but several MNPS students received at least five thousand dollars in scholarships that were donated by companies that are members uh, of that council and so they um, the, the highlight of that, not only did the, the, the I think it was about 12 students that received those scholarships, there were two students that graduated from Pearl Cone, because there was a time when that council only gave scholarships to Pearl Cone. Um, but there were two students that graduated from Pearl Cone. One is actually a teacher today, uh, MNNPS, and one is actually a nurse. And so they came back and they were very appreciative and thankful of the support they actually received from one Miss Phyllis Moore, who worked at Pearl Cone during that time um, with her babies. And uh, it was it was very it was it was it it was like graduation. It was that thing that reminds us that these long hours that we been doing this do actually have a, a return on that time. Before I forget, I'm going to pass out uh, two copies of a, of a memo that will go out uh, tomorrow, um, and it gives some more details around the community engagement component of the search, so more honing in on those dates and times and the timeline and process for that. Um, and you will also be receiving via email a press release for you to review um, before it goes out. Okay, so you just look for that in your in your mail either tonight or tomorrow morning. Miss Kim. Miss Kim. Miss. I'll need a couple. <laughs> Uh, Thursday this week is Education Day, and our local chambers of commerce are celebrating. Um, I'll be at the Madison uh, Chamber of Madison Rivergate Chamber of Commerce, uh, and Chris will be at the Goodlettsville Area Chamber of Commerce. And um, today also is the um, uh, all the juniors across the state of Tennessee took the ACT test. Mm -hmm. And I want to say congratulations to Hunters Lane, who had 94, 92.4% of their juniors were present today. Congratulations. Good. Very good. No. Ms. Hunter? Ms. Froke? There being no further business, this is being adjourned. Thank you. Don't get lost. We have a hearing coming up soon. We can start early if you like. We'll make sure everybody's here. All right, everybody's here. Okay, you guys want to take a water break, coffee break? Okay.